How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we have these things called big rolls. These are grilled seaweed rolls that are barbecue flavor. I found these at H Mart, which is a uh, kind of Asian market. And I thought, how cool would it be to try these out? They're like more of a healthy style snack. Um, pretty much no carbohydrates, at least uh, for me, because uh, of diabetes and whatnot. But um, this is what the box looks like. It's very colorful. I'm sorry I can't get the top in there right now. But uh, let's go ahead and look closely at the nutritional information. It has zero fat, 50 grams of sodium, and only two carbohydrates. So this is like the perfect healthy snack. Um, if you don't like fishy flavor, you're probably not going to like this very much. Uh, most seaweed has a very fishy flavor to it, but I actually don't mind that. I find that quite appealing. Um, this is what the back looks like. Same uh, design as the front. And the bottom is blank. And this is what the top looks like. It's called Tao Kai Noi. I believe that is, uh, Noi is, uh, maybe it's short for, um, something. I, th I think noise is in the word for seaweed. I'm not sure. In Japanese. Open this up. This is what the inside looks like. Comes with quite a few, which is really cool. Let's put the box to the side. Sorry if you can hear the dog barking in the background. My neighbor's dog tends to go off every time I start recording. Um... So this is what the packaging looks like. It's in a kind of aluminum style thing. They're all individually wrapped, which is really nice. So they keep them like uh, nice and fresh. And uh, I like how vibrant it is. They had a few different flavors, but I thought the barbecue one would taste interesting. Let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, this is what the inside looks like. Let's pull it out. So this is a kind of a thick one. It's like pretty, like a stick. It's all kind of wrapped together. And as you can see, it has all of the kind of powdered um, flavoring stuck to it. And uh, yeah, probably looks pretty weird to anybody who's never had this before, but this is actually pretty common for uh, snack things. Let's go ahead and try it out. Wow, this is really good. You know, I wasn't expecting like such a good mixture of barbecue and like the uh, seaweed flavor, but it is a top tier snackage material. I could definitely see myself eating some of these um, quite constantly. And luckily the store is not too far away. But yeah, have you guys ever had seaweed before? Is it something that kind of sounds like it would be a turn off or is it something that sounds really delicious right now? Let me know in the comments below. Sorry this video is so short, it's just I don't know what else to uh, say about it. It's delicious and um, I definitely suggest buying it if you come across it. Try it out. Let me know what you think if you ever do. And today we're going to be looking at a really interesting lens that goes on a cell phone. Now um, I've seen these before but I never really thought to pick one up. But this is actually a wide angle lens, so if you wanted to do like a picture with a bunch of people like it shows right here, and you're getting cut off, you can actually put this lens on, and it will actually give you a lot more field of view, which I think is really cool. And I lost the footage for this video, but I did not want to uh, give up, so I lost the part of me opening it up, but I really wanted to still be able to show you. This is a cell phone camera lens that kind of almost turns your phone into a DSLR type camera. Um, it comes with a cap and you actually mount it on the front of your camera. I lost the footage of the original one. I completed the whole video and I was really sad to see that my mic actually cut out. So basically what we're going to do is I have my cell phone right here and you basically just open it up and you clip the cell phone, I mean the uh, lens, onto the cell phone. And unfortunately, my camera is just a little bit too um, far down, but we do get most of it. As you can see, my hand right here, 
that's with the lens on without it you only get right here you get a significant increase in field of view with this thing and I'll probably use it on my secondary phone I used to record right here I'm currently recording on but it also works on front facing as well oh look my blood sugar is high go away diabetes alert all right hi <laughs> all right so basically you just slide it right on here and look how much of the ring light you can see take it off you can only see that much put it back on you can see almost the entire ring light isn't that insane look at that pretty cool and then of course um, if you had a phone that had the camera a little bit lower as you see on mine when I do put it on here I'm only very 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 small um, percentage off um, barely anything actually even if you do this it kinda makes it work a little bit more but if you had a camera that was a little bit farther up then you would totally be set it's just the S9 doesn't uh, have that going on for it but yeah I really do like this and um, I think it's gonna be some of the things that I bring with me actually when I want to do like photos but not bring my big camera I think that this would be a good thing to bring so I really didn't want to pass it up even though I lost the footage but yeah what do you guys think sorry that I didn't get the opening up part of this and maybe the video is a little bit jumbled up a little disheartening when the uh, <laughs> microphone decides to go out and you just don't know when you're talking to yourself but it's whatever you know as Bob Ross says there's no mistakes just happy little accidents all right and today we're looking at this brain teaser um, basically what this is I think is you're supposed to separate these two twisted pieces of metal and uh, you know I guess you know fiddle around with it until you're able to figure it out it doesn't really give any instructions but this is made by um, Green Bear International so I have a few, to, few of their items already but let's go ahead and open it up and see how hard this is there we go. I do enjoy myself some puzzles, so I'm hoping that this is a little bit of a challenge. So, we just need to separate these, so it should be pretty easy, just... Oh! They're, um... a little bit off right there, so you can't just pull it through. Maybe we need to, uh do some maneuvering around right here. Let's put that out of the way. I'm not sure how we're supposed to do this. It's linked in there pretty well. Huh. <sighs> okay. So if it can't go this way, then it's going to have to go this way, right? But then how are we going to get it to... Oh. Look at that. And then... Maybe we twist it up this way, and then we can pull this through somehow. I feel like I'm getting close, but I, so I don't want to make too many sudden movements and lose my track, because I'm one of those people who lose track of my thoughts if I, uh... So that's definitely not going to go through there. But, we do have a lot of leeway right here. Hmm. Maybe the answer is really simple and I just don't see it. I'd like to be able to take this part off right here. Maybe there's a way that we can maneuver this. Oh no, we're back at square one again, aren't we? So twist. Around, maybe. Like that. Now we're in a bit of a different position. And then maybe move this over here. I am not good at these things. The best thing it would be would be able to be able to get this to 
to go this direction, but I'm not sure how we're going to manage that, because it's stuck right there. I've never been the smartest when it comes to puzzles, but... I think if I give it a little bit of messing around, we'll be able to figure this out. How would we get this to shift? Because it's locked on this single position. There's no way to get this out of here, I don't think. Maybe you have to... Oh! What did I just do? Did I bend it? On accident? No. Because these both don't, can't push through this little, well, I'm going to have to watch this back because I somehow solved the puzzle. Um, I don't know if I did it the right way, but it came apart and I think that was the goal. So yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get it back together though. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit of an issue, but yeah, so here we go. We uh, completed the puzzle. What do you guys think? pretty interesting stuff. Took me a minute. Took me about six minutes to figure it out, so they say it's rated for six plus, so <laughs> uh, gotta be some smart kids out there. And today we are going to be looking at some more individually packed erasers. I have quite a few right here, and uh, I want to make a part two compilation eventually of all these different erasers that I found. Found quite a few interesting ones, so let's go ahead and look. The first one we have right here is a uh, cupcake. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. It is uh, from iWacko, like most of these. This is a, uh, a cake. It has a little um, cute anime type uh, girl at the top with a little icing thing. Let's go ahead and cut this off. And if you're new to my channel, all of these are actually puzzles as well. They all come apart in different ways, which is really interesting, honestly. A very unique idea. All right, well, the camera's having a little bit of trouble. There we go. So this is what it looks like. They go through a lot of effort. As you can see, the icing is all uh, very pretty. Almost looks like it could be real icing. There's even little indents as if the um, cupcake went in the oven and rose and got those little bubbles in there. Then we have the bottom area right here. And then you can actually take off the icing and then you just have the cake part. And if you want to, you can even take off the cake part. And then these all go back together to create a cupcake. I like that. It's pretty cute. And uh, it can go with the rest of my sweet set. That's the first one. All right, and the next one right here we have is a dog and a doghouse too. So this one's really interesting because unlike my previous videos, um, a lot of these are just single things. There's not multiple things in here. And this one almost has its own little scene set up. So that's actually kind of cool. I didn't take this out of here. So first of all, let's uh, put the dog's head on. <laughs> so as we can see right here, it has, wow, look at that. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. It has the tiny little latch. That is so small. I mean, we're comparing this to my literal fingernail. That is, uh, that's, in, that's insane. All right, let's go ahead and put the dog's head on. That's pretty cute. Yeah, that's really cute. Alright. And it comes with a doghouse as well. Has a little end in at the bottom. Has the little door. And probably the roof. Yep. And the roof comes off. This is the first eraser that I gotta say it came apart really easily, so that's probably gonna get lost. But, uh, you definitely could use the dog, though. I feel like the dog is a lot more sturdy on there. 
and you can just use this as backup but honestly you can take these apart and they're just erasers so they don't need to be like super you know you know built well but yeah this is the dog and the doghouse and the next thing I'm going to be showing is uh, something I've been eating a lot of lately it's really good I believe it is called taiyaki and this is a breading a sweet breading with uh, sweet bean paste inside it is really good surprisingly um, I mean it doesn't sound great probably to uh, you know if somebody doesn't know it or hasn't tried it uh, sweet beans you know but um, it's actually really good let's go ahead and take this out of here so this is what they traditionally look like they're kind of pressed together and they have this little seam even on the uh, actual uh, taiyaki and they went through the effort of putting in a lot of these details it's really cool yeah really nice and detailed they even have the uh, spot where the chocolate goes in so let's see if we can uh, pull this apart yeah look at that fine seam line you could barely see it before that and then this is what the inside would uh, be full of chocolate or uh, bean paste actually I believe this one might be a chocolate filled one though but traditionally they're filled with uh, bean paste I believe but there's ones that have uh, ice cream in them with chocolate or strawberry or even bean paste and uh, I had all three of those these last this last um, little bit this last week and um, really good really really good so that was that one the next one we got here is a whale I believe this is from the sea creature set let's go ahead and open this up that's pretty cute and you can see the inside of his mouth a little bit has a bit of a glittery look to it doesn't it oh wow I think all of these separate out of here that'd be insane let's go ahead and open it up and see wow that is really cool all the details on top of the whale are actually lifted up details actually on the inside that's really cool and then of course this part comes off as well and then the eyes are right in there too let's pop those back in there don't want to lose the eyes right let's see how does this go right here and then right here and then we just pop the other thing back in very nice this is probably one of my favorite ones I've seen in this set just because of like how cool they did the engineering on that really nice I wonder if this can float and then the last one we got here kind of reminds me of like a pac-man this is a thing of cherries and this one's probably a pretty simple one but I don't want to pass it up it has a really nice detail on the leaf on both sides actually two different details and I'm not sure I guess you could hold it like this in a race or you could put your finger with pressure in a race like that but I feel like you're gonna be racing with these a lot more and yeah it comes out and it actually holds pretty well see I have to pull pretty hard for it to come out so yeah not too bad I like these ones could definitely do a little bit of a racing with that and there we go another set of iwaco erasers these things are great you know and uh, they're really small because I can hold all of these in one hand I got a little bit of a box um, that I'm collecting these in and I might give them to some of my friends or depending on um, my tier of patreons um, I might send some of these out too if uh, you're interested go ahead and check out my um, my uh, patreon I have a certain tier on there that if you subscribe to it I send out a uh, personalized gift or letter so there is that but I'm also thinking of adding that to a lower tier too just whatever covers the shipping because I'd love to be able to share these with you guys and maybe have some pictures put on like a social media maybe I'll make a Twitter but yeah and we have some more interesting toys 
You guys have probably noticed I've been doing a lot of toys lately. Um, I really like novelty toys, and I also really like um, seeing what kids are playing with these days and the different types of things that they've come out with since I was a child. And I thought these looked really interesting. This is a flingshot chicken. You put it on the end of your finger and you pull like this. It actually is like a slingshot. You could uh, shoot it at your friends, have like a slingshot chicken battle. Again, this is by Green Bear International. Um, they have a lot of really interesting kind of novelty toys. Um, risk of injury and um, property damage. Don't point, don't point this at your eyes or face. Uh, don't point it at animals. Do not overstretch. And uh, don't use it if it's worn or damaged because you might pull it and it might flick back the opposite way somehow. You never know. You Maybe you'll, your hand will get loose and you'll smack yourself in the face. But yeah, you insert the thumb into the chicken's head, hold its feet with the other hand, pull back, and uh, responsibly aim. That's the key. you got to be responsible with the chickens. Let's go ahead and open this up. I also like the uh, colorful packaging, too. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull that off. Oh my god. Look at his head. That's trippy. Look at that. Like a bobblehead. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. Alright, anyways. Um, so basically, what it says is we put it on our thumb. Warning, this might be a little loud. I'm going to try to hit it hard enough to where it doesn't fly behind my desk. Oh, it might. So we pull it back, and... Well, I'll have to get that one later. It did sound like it stuck to there really quick, though. So, that's something. It shot pretty good, too. Let's see how high I can get it to go. Not very high. Um, <laughs> I think you'd have to stretch it a lot farther, but my camera's right here, so I can't really uh, stretch it that far, though. But uh, let me go ahead and grab one of these from under my desk. All right, so I got this back from the uh, back of my desk, and kind of good that it fell. As you see, it, it picks up everything. So if you're a kid and you're playing with this, you're going to get this absolutely covered and stuff because it's sticky, too. It's kind of like a sticky material, kind of like a slime. Um, you're going to want to wash these off every time you're done playing with them because they're going to definitely attract everything. But yeah, I kind of like these. Very cool. Stretches pretty far, too. Very simplistic idea. Um, it is just a standard, um, probably silicone injection mold that they used for this that has a bit of stretch to it. Um, but it's pretty cool. I like the derpy looking design, and uh, yeah. And today, we don't just have one of these squishy toys. We have two squishy toys. Now, what these are, I believe, is these have some kind of orbies inside of them. And as you see, when you squeeze them, they have this really interesting effect. I thought it'd be really interesting for us to be able to uh, kind of see what these are about and see how they feel. has some information on the back. It says, uh, do not puncture the outer layer. Avoid uh, direct sunlight. In contact, accidental contact occurs. Wash with warm and soapy water. And uh, please retain package for future reference. So yeah, it's going to want to make sure that you don't puncture this or get any of the goopy stuff on your fingers from the inside. Go ahead and open the first one. Oh, it looks like it had a pull tab. That's okay. Alright, let's see this. Alright. Right, so right off the bat, we got kind of a sticky outside. And when we squeeze it, all of these kind of separate. I don't know if you can see that. But these are so slick that all of these can move not only through my fingers, but through that small chamber to make a bubble. See if we can get that on camera real close. Look at that. Isn't that weird? That's so trippy. And if you look really closely when you're holding it like this, 
there's still an outer layer of plastic right there, but it's stretched so thin, it's almost like a ghostly silhouette, but you can see it when I run my finger across it. But without it, my hand being there, it kind of looks like it's not there at all, doesn't it? Zoom back out on this thing. So they're called squishy toys. Let's go ahead and try to squish it down. So I guess basically you just press down until it bubbles out like that. Kind of reminds me of a frog. Look at that. Ribbit. Ribbit. And then, let's see. It also stretches pretty far. It can stretch all the way to the other sides of the camera. And... Let's see if you can twist it. Yeah, you can twist it, but I wouldn't suggest doing that constantly. That's how you break these things, probably. And the nub is pretty, uh, pretty solid. It's probably where they um, sealed it off. But you can like grab it, and maybe like do like little noises or something. This feels really satisfying in the hand. I'm not gonna lie. Not the most pleasant sound on the planet, but, uh, it, uh, yeah, I, I mean, for a dollar, I think this is a really great squishy toy. I've seen these at fairs and at the mall, uh, similar things for, like, five, six dollars, so. I played with it, I've stretched it, I've squeezed it, and I've smushed it, and it hasn't broken up. So I would say that's pretty much a win. What do you guys think? Go ahead and set this guy to the side. Right here we got ourselves a another one. I believe this one is supposed to be like a berry. Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you I like this color a lot more than I like the other. We got some kind of silicone top right here too that's supposed to look like a leaf. It's kind of cool. You see that? And then uh, the bottom. So it looks like they seal this one off at the top. Let's go ahead and give it a squeeze. Oh, I like that a lot. That's such a nice green color. Let's focus in on that. Look at that. When I slowly squeeze it, you can see them all kind of make their way through the pressure of my fingers to the other side of this little, like, silicone chamber. That's so interesting. And it kind of maintains its shape pretty well, too. Let's see about this one stretching. It does a pretty good stretch. Like I said, I wouldn't suggest uh, stretching or squishing too much, or twisting. Uh, squishing, yes. But uh, the twisting and the other stuff, no. Because you don't want this stuff to fly all over the place. I wouldn't want to get this on your hands, because it doesn't seem like it's safe. That's the only problem. But that's just so cool. Same thing with the other one. Like when you squeeze it enough, you can see with my hand, but when you move it away, it's almost like they're all just kind of like one giant orb. Let's uh, see about both of these at the same time. I wonder if they stick to each other. Almost. Yeah, they do. Not too much, but if you left them like in the same bag for a long time, you probably could get uh, them to stick together pretty well. Not that you really need to. I think it'd be really cool to have, like, you'd be one of those weird people that have a uh, interest. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be weird, but you have, like, a fruit bowl. Instead of, like, wax vegetables or anything, you have squish vegetables. That would be an interesting idea. But yeah, what do you guys think about these things? I think that uh, interesting stress relief toys are pretty neat. Because honestly, you know, you could be playing a video game or these actually have a pretty good squeeze to it. So you could do these for like maybe guitar exercise. Try to get strength back in your hands if you can't do proper exercise equipment. I think there's a lot of purposes these could be used for besides being just novelty kids toys. What do you think, guys? You think kids would go bananas over these toys? Let me know in the comments below. And today we have something else that really reminds me of some of my 90s toys. Um, I had one of these, but I had them as stencils, and there was a bunch of these different things. This one is kind of a 
enclosed one and what this is is this is a spiral art it creates really interesting designs just like that by putting your pen or pencil down and then rotating it multiple times to be able to create a really nice design so i thought how cool would it be to be able to show you guys how this performs let's go ahead and open this plastic up all right so right off the bat we have uh few different ones of these little cog wheels. They run around the inside of this uh, grooved area, like this. See? And I'm going to take these out. We even have kind of a square one too, that's kind of interesting. And it's supposed to make designs just like this. Now these were really popular even before my time. And let's see what we got here. Maybe we have a uh, yeah, we can actually use the back of this in order to be able to test it out. But you can load in as much paper as you want. Just cut it down to size. And then uh, lock it in here. There we go. The plastic's a little bit cheap feeling. But uh, for something for a kid, that definitely wouldn't be bad. And uh, yeah, so I just flipped that thing around. We're going to use the cardboard side so I don't have to waste any paper. And the first one I want to try out is uh, this one right here. This is a uh, kind of square one. Let's go ahead and grab my uh, trusty pen I did from one of my other videos. All right, so all we have to do is put the pen in here and then run it around this grooved area. And it creates a design. But if you change the direction you're going, it's a little bit hard because of the angle I'm trying to do it at to show you guys. But usually you can do this pretty fast. Let's see if we can change it up. And then now let's do this one. I didn't finish that one, that's okay though. So, right off the bat, we get a really cool design just from the first one. And we can even swap it out if we wanted to. And then do one with this and overlap it. That is definitely not my best work at all, but it works. And it looks like I might need to swap this out real quick. So this will be a good test to see how easy it is to put in regular paper. All right, now that I cut it to size, we just slide it in right here. Push this down. And this is really cool because normally, oh, I did cut it a little bit too much. Let's see just a little bit farther down. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll open it a little bit up. There we go. Normally what would happen is if you had this, you'd have to hold the paper down and do the spiral at the same time. But because you have this clamp design, you don't even need to do that. You have your own like perfect open area and it'll definitely make it easier for the kids. Let's go ahead and try this pink one out and see what kind of design we can get. I'm going to start in from the center right here. Go one, uh, actually let's go three in. what this one looks like. Kind of like a uh, triangle but kind of squished. And then I believe the last one we haven't tried is the yellow one. This one I'm not too sure how we're going to be able to get to work but I don't want to waste any more paper because we still have a lot of space on here. 
Okay, this one's more like a circular one. Let's use the inner one real quick. Oh, we change it. And it changed into kind of a triangle. I actually really like that design. Look at that, guys. What do you think? Not the most perfect spiral art I've ever done, but uh, let's add a little accent to it. There. Now it's good spiral art. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? Do you think the clamshell design would be a lot easier for kids? I do. Um, one thing I would have liked to see at the bottom is if they put those little uh, rubber nubs so that if you did set it down like you're supposed to, it wouldn't slide back and forth. That's about the only critique I have on this thing. Besides that, it has a nice little handle if you had like a tiny little kid hands and you wanted to take it around. But yeah, and today um, I have another interesting toy. I've been in kind of a toy kick lately after going through my 90s toys. And these things really reminded me of something that would be kind of a 90s toy. You ever remember those sticky hands that you get out of the quarter machines? Well, these guys right here, their center and their hands are made out of the same thing. But the concept is, is these are like ninjas and they flip down walls. How cool is that? So we got ourselves like a lightning ninja, a uh, kind of drawn looking ninja. And this guy right here too very interesting stuff it says toss your ninja at a smooth surface and watch as it flips tumbles and rolls away down the wall let's go ahead and check it out guys all right so right off the bat we have a little cover on the back so that these things don't get all um non-sticked in the packaging. Oh, yep. Yeah. So we have this uh, center right here, which I don't know how long these guys will last. That's a very thin. Uh, same with these things. Look at that. It's hanging on by a thread. But uh, let's go ahead and test these out and see if it actually works. And, uh... <laughs> oh? Maybe something's happening. Oh? Oh? Hey! It actually did a flip. I am really surprised. I did not think this thing could do a flip. Let's pull out one of these other guys and see how they perform. Oh no. That's definitely a point away from me. Look at that. His arm fell off immediately out of the packaging. Like I said, these things are super thin, so... Oh no. Both of these guys broke. So two... Let's pull this guy out of here. So two out of the three of these guys broke immediately out of the packaging. I just pulled them out of the plastic part and it stuck on there. And without really much force at all, it just ripped their hand right off. Um, as you can see, it's only attached by that tiny little thread. And uh, they're not made very well. It's also kind of a cheap plastic, though these were a dollar, so I can't really judge too much, but um, I am, primarily because half of it's broken. Um, I definitely wouldn't look at these guys for like purchasing options. Um, I can't say everyone's going to be broken, but I definitely would not suggest this as something that I would recommend to you guys. But. I'll let that guy chill up there for a second. And today we're doing something I haven't done since I was a kid. And this is a sand art kit. Um, first of all, 
leave a comment below if you've ever done one of these things because these were insanely popular when I was a kid. Um, this one is actually a glow-in-the-dark version, which I never did one of these when I was a kid, a glow-in-the-dark one. But this is what the front of the packaging looks like. You're supposed to be able to separate it into all these kind of different tiers and uh, make an interesting kind of like uh, color, uh, layered color um, sand thing. And then a side right there. And then on the back it says it includes two bags of sand, one bag of glow-in-the-dark sand, one heart-shaped bottle, and one design tool. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to start filling this up from the bottom to the top and we're going to try to make some interesting designs and then I'll put it in front of my light and turn the lights off and see how good the glow effect is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this guy up. So this is what the inside looks like. There's actually not much to it. I think they could have left this inside of like a um, baggie just like this and put in like another baggie or something but I don't know, it feels like there's kind of a wasted space in there. That's okay though. Just my little two cents, I guess. So this is what the stuff inside looks like. I have a little pull tab right here. So it likes, looks like we have the three bags of sand. Let's go ahead and put that down. We have the heart-shaped container. And then we have a wooden dowel that is going to be used to um, separate the sand in here. I'm going to push my camera down a little bit. Alright, now that I got this all situated, we need to figure out which one of these sands that we want to use first. And honestly, I don't know which one's the glow-in-the-dark one. I'm inclined to say it's either this one or this one. I have a feeling it's this one, but I guess the best way to tell would be to put it up to the light real quick, both all of these, and then turn the light off and see if any of them look like they're glowing. Not really. It might be one of those ones where you have to let it sit out into the uh, light for a while, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll post a comment below. Um, if it ends up getting really nice and bright or not, because if it's not bright by the end of the video, then uh, I don't want to cut and let it sit for six hours, you know. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and open this guy up. This is just kind of a standard little uh, plastic thing. One thing I'm not too happy about is this. Um, this is supposed to be the decoration part, and they had to slap their logo on this. I don't know why why out of like everywhere they couldn't just put it on like one of the baggies or something. Cause like if you're having it sat down, you're gonna have to always keep it in this direction now. That's okay though. I mean it's not like the biggest deal in the world, but I think that they could have done a better uh choice on placement, even maybe down here. I would have been okay with that. Alright, so what should we start off with first? I really like the combination of blue and orange. The contrast is really nice. Maybe that's why they make Tide Pods look like uh, blue and orange, because of the color contrast. Not because of the weird trend going on, or what was going on. So let's go ahead and take this, and we want to probably cut this like a uh, icing thing. Just to have the corner open, so let's do that. <clears throat> This is going to be really hard to get in here, by the way. I'm going to do my best not to spill, but I can't guarantee anything. Alright. So, here's the first layer. Let's make the first layer blue. And I don't think I'm going to necessarily need to um, separate this down in here, but this is what it's going to look like when we do. It is basically... Uh, kind of shaping it a little bit. Alright, so next I'm thinking that I want to do a little bit of orange, but I think I should uh, try some pink first, because I know I'm going to be really inclined to want to do a lot of uh, 
the blue and orange together. But let's see how this looks. Maybe I'll be surprised I'll like this too. Honestly, I thought this would be a lot harder than it was going to be. <clears throat> but as a kid, you know, you go and make a bowl of cereal and you somehow magically get milk all over the counter. You know, you kind of hone your muscle memory once you get older. So let's do a few of these ones. Let's do... Look, I already had my first catastrophe. Right when I was talking about how I have this superior adult muscle memory. <laughs> Alright, let's kind of pour more of this in here. We're gonna need a decent amount. There we go. Alright. Let's give this a few taps. You can also separate it in here too if you wanted to. It's not super necessary, but if you want to get like really perfect lines, you can try to just get that going on. And now finally, let's do like a single, not a single, but maybe like a just middle layer of orange, but like a few of them, but towards the center. I'm really feeling like this orange one's going to be the... Uh, yeah, actually, let's do that. Do I want to do all of it? Yeah, I want to do all of it. Might not be everyone's uh, cup of tea, but I think this will look really interesting. Plus, if it, this is the glow-in-the-dark sand, the center of the heart's going to be the portion that uh, glows the most. Look at that, it's already separated in there. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Wow, you can really see the fine grains of sand on the camera. How cool is that? Very nice. Let's zoom in on there. Look at this big mess I've made. It's like all over here. Alright, let's tap this over a little bit. Let's try to uh, straighten this out just a little bit. Because I want to... make the other layers now so next I'm gonna do blue because I like blue and orange we're gonna need to start making these a little bit thicker towards the top most likely this one I'm gonna need to make thicker just because of the width we're at the widest part right now I believe or one of the widest parts there we go it's not too bad now let's do pink again, because it seem, seems like we have a lot of blue. So let's add a little bit more pink notes into there. Up we go. Up, 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 up. And then let's separate it out. Look at that nice thin line of blue we did right there. And I feel like we're going to have leftover, so let's do a few thin lines of blue again. Let's kind of separate them out. And then pink again. Let's try to do it a little bit thinner. Because we're going to start getting towards the top right here. We don't want to uh, run out of space. Kind of like Tetris. You get to the top and then you lose. Except this one we're winning because we, we get the thing actually. Alright. See, that was a little bit too thin uh, of uh, pink right there for me. But not terrible. And then let's just cap it off at this point. I'm going to need to kind of move it around because we really want this compacted. Because if it's not compacted, it's going to end up shifting when you put it in something or years from now when you throw it in a tub or you need to move. You're going to really want this nice and compacted in here. That way, it'll last forever. And then the last little bit. Time to put on the cap. And the cool thing about this one, it looks like, let's see if we can get it all the way. There we go. A little bit more. Oh wow, look at that. It's all mixed together. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it real quick. Look at that. 100% unique. 
no one in the world will ever make one exactly the same. Interesting thought, huh? So the top right here, actually, you lo it looks like you could put it on like a necklace, or maybe even make it a key fob if you wanted to. Though it's a little bit heavy to keep on your keys. What do you guys think about this? I'm still a little disappointed on the back, because as you see, there's a slightly different design on the back. Then you got this. Um, maybe if I put some isopropic alcohol on here, I might be able to rub these letters off. I'll give it a try later off camera. But look at that really nice uh, combination of all these different sands. It's such a simple like uh, concept, but it's so cool. I'm going to put on the light a little bit. Turn my light all the way up. All right, the moment of truth. I don't know if you could see right there, but right here, there was a little bit of a glow before it slowly started to dissipate. So what I'm thinking, sorry about all that light change, what I'm thinking is this is going to need to sit out in like the sun, or you're going to need to keep it by a really nice bright light source for a while to get it to soak in all that nice light energy. But what do you guys think? I think this is a really neat, kind of relaxing, therapeutic kind of little toy to mess with. You know, I think even as an adult messing around with things like this, you know, there's no harm in it. And uh, always buy those things and do those things you always wanted to do as a kid, no matter how old you are. And today we're going to be looking at an LED security motion sensor light. Um, this is basically a light that is going to go off if somebody, let's say, goes into an area they're not supposed to, or maybe you just need a light to illuminate your backyard if you're going through there in the middle of the night, or you just need, you could even put this inside of uh, your garage if you wanted to. So this is from A Zone Security. I'm going to be putting a link in the description below. It is waterproof. It has a detection sensor. It's good for night illumination, has an easy installation, and it only runs off of 12 volts, 1 amp. So, not bad, not bad. This is what the front of the box looks like. We have this side right here. I'm pretty sure, I, I don't want to like, it, I'm going to say this looks more like Chinese, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And then right here we have a little bit more of the technical specifications. Um, it's going to be a white light that's about uh, 6,000 to 65,000 K, which I'm assuming is lumens, um, I'm thinking. And it says that the detection sensitivity is about 8 meters. And it works from 30 Celsius to 60 Celsius. Um, I don't know how to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius but um or celsius to fahrenheit for me to understand that but I, I get a rough a rough kind of idea of what that is so if you want to take a screenshot of this you can go ahead and uh, look that up and without further ado let's go ahead and open up the box and see what this is all about all right let's go ahead and open up the top All right, right here we have the instruction booklet. Yeah, it says, uh, note, this is an LED light with a motion sensor, not a real security camera. So basically what this would be good for is if you wanted a cheaper alternative. This is about $30, but it looks just like a real camera too. And if you wanted to keep some unsavory people away, um, that might want to like rob your house or something, for example, or steal packages off your porch. Uh, this would definitely uh, show them that you have some kind of security and they might feel a little bit less uh, inclined to do that. So the first thing we have in here is the power supply. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. We have some brackets, or not brackets, what am I talking about, uh, hollow wall anchors and some screws. So it comes with that so you don't have to buy it yourself. 
It comes with an extension cable, which allows you to plug it directly into the power supply and extend it quite a bit. That's good. And then we have the camera looking light itself right here, which actually looks really cool. Look at that. You can see all the LEDs inside of that. Let's zoom in on that. I like how the motherboard's black. You kind of can't really see it, but like right in here, you can see the tiny little, uh, it actually says LED. Can you see it? Pretty neat, huh? Also a tiny little dot right there. So this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and zoom out on it a little bit. It has an adjustable arm, it looks like, to where you can, uh, move it up and down. Pretty stiff, which is good. That means it's not going to wiggle around. And then you also can uh, adjust this, I believe, as well. To get it nice and uh, tight on there. So you put it on your wall, like this. Push it down. Or it'll be more like that. And then uh, if somebody passes by here, it's going to light up. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see how bright this is. It might be a little bit hard to see it on the camera, but we might as well plug it in anyways, right? Oh, whoa. Oh, that's bright. That's really bright. So I turned off my light completely. And as you can see, it is really bright. There, this is just the light right here. What you can see whatever it illuminates it's so bright it completely just take you can even see this when i point it to there that's really bright it probably has a timer on it too that it eventually goes off i'm not sure what the timer is look at the how weird my hand looks though i can see all the pores in my skin weird all right there we go this thing is super bright, and uh, it'll definitely be good for uh, keeping it around, like maybe the backyard or something. I do have to say, though, the plastic could be a little bit better, but it's still, it's still pretty good. As long as you don't put it directly under the rain, I think it should be fine. Um, but besides the, the plastic, um, I think everything else is pretty good build quality. It's very nice and light, so it's going to be easy to put it up. And uh, you can pretty, pretty much put it on anything because of its weight. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, anything being damaged. I can hold this with one hand, see? But yeah, this has been the A-Zone um, kind of camera-looking uh, motion light. And if you're interested in this, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description below where you can find this. And yeah, a huge shout-out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.